The vast majority believe that it's pseudo progression. So we'll try to figure out what is it. But basically, we've been studying immunotherapy, and those are the conclusions we came into. Yeah. Those are the characteristics of uh, this treatment modality. Uh, universality, the key acting factors, uh, the key acting factor is the immune system itself. The immune system is a huge mechanism and somewhat inert. It takes time, you know, responses and uh, mm, there, there is such a thing as immunological memories. One has to remember that the immune system is a regulatory system. You know, it's it's it's, it's supposed to not only fight the external aggression invasion, but also internal. Uh, solving internal problem and basically dualism of action and the uh, comprehensive actions that may up and down regulate uh, the same thing. I have to remember that the immune therapy is a targeted uh, impact and the, the targets are very prevalent. The, in our case, we are going to be discussing, you know, universality in 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 inner inner actions and the dualism of actions. So I expect, you know, the um, similar patterns of responses. So we need time for the effect, um, but the effect should be sustainable. In conjunction with the dualism, we have three options, the possibility of anti-tumorous effect and the st uh, tumor stimulating effect, and the third one, based on these three uh, issues we will in fact suggest two new patterns pseudo progression what do we mean by that temporary um, increase of the tumor mass with the, uh, followed by regression without uh, changing therapy and uh, indeed we see we don't change anything in our uh, behavior is patient uh, concluded patient often time they respond and the hyper progression you know implies a rapid uh, acceleration actually of um, tumor growth um, it means that the immune system stimulates uh, the su support tumor growth uh, often it may be, you know, after stabilization and regression or uh, immediate growth. Basically, there is no conventional definition because no one knows. So, you know, um, how to measure actually this growth and what are the thresholds? Why do we segregate pseudo uh, progression? It of course, our clinical trials show that in basically the patient who, in fact, meet criteria of progression, but for whatever reason, they live long. And of course, you know, their survival rate are worse than those in patients with no progression, but nonetheless. The second aspect is the situation related to melanoma. Basically, there were no efficient methods of treatment. And the patient who continued treatment that displayed better survival as opposed to treatment, patient who discontinued treatment. And before that, you know, basically, we in fact uh, made changes in uh, tumor relation or tumor assessment system. What has been done for that? We basically started with the 
um, the two day it was a, to, to begin with it was a two dimensional system and we had to add you know like the size of dimension then the system got modified and basically and uh, just two lesions it um, the calculations were limited to two lesions later on so we decided not to rely upon just two uh, lesions because uh, it increased the uh, uh, likelihood of bias what was characteristic for all of this system and basically without a doubt it's actually it was progression it, what was different the number of lesions and the number of measurements and then the much old actually WHO system modification was suggested that um, he if in the past we in fact found the progression markers and uh, which necessitated discontinuation of treatment in the modified system you know uh, confirmation was needed four weeks later and resist and the both system and IRC resist system also got modified and the new um, uh, thoughts I weren't taken into consideration and IRC system which was in fact uh, like a derivative of WHO system but the new lesion were measured and accrued. That's how study uh, and frequency of this event by various system. Oftentimes, the, you know, the um, results uh, coincided. Sometimes they didn't. Uh, resist system, WHO system, okay. Ipili boom up. You know, the discrepancy was as significant as 11%. As various uh, vaccines, we see the similar pattern from, you know, discrepancies also about 10 to 15%. Uh, but these patients, nonetheless, basically, you know, are somewhere in the middle in terms of their survival in between clinically stable and the progression patients, progressing patients, and the difference is statistically significant. Why do we see this discrepancy? We have to remember that whenever, you know, calculations are done, the zero point should be taken into consideration. It may be Mm. Point like if it's zero or it's a range, and, and the, those are the um, ranges from minus 30 to plus 20. Even within uh, the same study, you know, um, done by the same researcher, uh, there are uh, there is variability of. Uh, measurements. So unfortunately it is to be taken into consideration and stabilization is not where the situation we cannot tell whether it's like a bias or measurement error or it's a clinically significant uh, phenomenon. And that stabilization of course you know is a desirable outcome especially you know on connotation of immunotherapy the second peculiarity that is to be taken into consideration you know the system with a varying number of uh, lesions you know sometimes patients have uh, five plus sometimes 10 plus uh, lesion and we can select those lesions for evaluation randomly and whether it's you know single dimensional or the big dimensional system 
uh, if we take five lesions, you know, we, we have to anticipate like different types of uh, responses. And uh, some patients may be ablated with three different systems, and they, they can display the partial regression stabilization. You know, again, one has to take into consideration this peculiar feature, and the clinicians must understand deeply this system. What about the biological uh, basis of this phenomenon? You know, we already mentioned a hyperprogression as opposed to pseudoprogression. In case of hyperprogression, it's stipulated by growth of a um, tumor. As for pseudoprogression, uh, you know, this growth is not that c critical. What does it give us? Well, we have to, again, uh, differentiate between different uh, responses, but there is a uh, pitfall here, the rate of this phenomenon, hyper-progression phenomenon. And it's a number of studies. Mostly, you know, we studied uh, uh, melanoma and uh, uh, lung cancer. But sometimes, like uh, head and neck tumors were studied. But, you know, and that rate studied from 4 to 29 percent. But look at different definitions. Some people uh, use like uh, over growth over 50 percent, some uh, other people growth of 100 percent, or uh, changes in uh, tumor genetic. Which means we, um, professional then reach uh, into consensus regarding progression criteria. Here is a very interesting report. The author describes hyperprogression. The patient with lung cancer uh, showed. Uh, progress of uh, the growth uh, of the tumor uh, three days after uh, treatment started, but after administering prednisolone, that progression stopped. And we could term it as a pseudo progression. Uh, but the article was uh, titled Hyperprogression, which was observed uh, three days after the treatment started. Uh, we all know about the kinetics of the tumor growth uh, by Gompers. Uh, this biology does not change. However, uh, we do not have enough information whether the tumor cell started to grow after treatment, or we could have some other phenomenon which we cannot yet classify. Uh, these uh, pictures uh, are three weeks apart. We, in the cells, uh, we had, uh, on top we had 16 chromosomal sets, but uh, in the bottom picture we had cells with as many as 64 uh, sets of chromosomes. So here we can speak about hyperprogression. It looks like uh, uh, this hyperprogression uh, is accompanied by a faster proliferation of uh, T cells in the tumor. And we can see that the patients who suffer from hyperprogression, the amount of these T cells also grows after treatment. 
Another factor is the influence uh, of the drugs that we use in anti-PD-1 therapy. Uh, the cells uh, respond to this treatment, anti-PD-18 treatment, differently. The adhesion of mononuclei with the receptor gives a cell a signal and with some patients this activation triggers hyperprogression. This is one of the ideas that we have to explain hyperprogression, but perhaps uh, we could be we would be able in further research uh, it will help us to select patients uh, who do not demonstrate any response at all or demonstrate uh, rapid growth of the tumor after treatment what are potential factors associated with hyperprogression? They are age, uh, the greater the age, uh, the greater is the threat of hyperprogression, and also genetic factors, uh, MDM2, MDM4. Uh, which can amplify uh, and uh, alterations of certain genes. Also, if uh, there are, uh, there's a lot of uh, free DNA in the blood then it again can speed up the progression of the tumor. In the patients we demonstrated, uh, demonstrate uh, faster growth of tumor, this hyperprogression may also uh, be evident. Again, is it possible to switch on voting again? The same question. So you have to choose your web browser and uh, choose the option, the version of your response. It looks like we have already cast our ballots. So it looks like hyperprogression was more interesting than pseudo progression. So the practical conclusions out of all that. Once I asked at an international conference, uh, the issue was on hyperprogression and pseudoprogression. We can use uh, two systems or several systems for immune therapy. How do we evaluate uh, the results? We have to compare two systems and then we'll have to think it over once again. Today, we do not have any reliable markers and we do not have any 
optimum recommendation. So we have to use the results uh, of treatment in two systems, and we also have to take into account the well-being of the patient. Sometimes slower growth is a positive thing. Or when the patients see that the tumor continues to grow, it is psychologically difficult to uh, go on with treatment. Uh, and these words, just like negative and positive dynamics uh, development, uh, they may be very disappointing for the patient. The patient should be uh, convinced that we are to improve uh, the condition and to achieve the desired effect with the patient. Questions, please, from the floor. The subject is very important and topical. Thank you, Alexei Viktorovich. Your presentation was really interesting. You were speaking about melanoma, but here with melanoma, you can uh, make a biopsy. Uh, can't you? Yes, we can. Well, uh, in most cases, we can make a biopsy, but interpretation of results, so that's the issue. I understand it, but it looks like not only morphology, but markers. Just a chemical uh, composition, the environment, it is possible to distinguish it, but I haven't yet uh, met any good results from those doctors who made biopsy on their patients with melanoma, and they could not tell for certain whether that is pseudo-progression or hyper-progression. Uh, for instance, if there is an inflammation, and uh, we had a situation like that, the patient received vaccine, and uh, on uh, uh, magnetic resonance uh, scanning, we found uh, that structurally, uh, the progression is really fast. We'll have yet to find markers which are very specific because there are many markers. Maybe we should try to capture specific cells to distinguish between the regular progress and an irregular accidental event. How often does hyper progression take place with melanoma? Not very often. Uh, perhaps here we do not yet uh, have a, an accurate definition of hyperprogression because not many people know what 
there used to be and might be the initial rate of progression can be compared with, but not everyone knows it from the very beginning. I think we should deeper understand the biology of the process. Uh, only then we'll be able uh, to say something different. What did your resident doctors do at that time? The melanoma patients, they usually believe in monotherapy, in immune therapy. Uh, some of them are very difficult to convince uh, that the therapy should go on. Uh, but they believe in it and they want the treatment to continue even if the tumor continues to grow. If it is possible, might be a control uh, examination and controlling examination should be performed. If there are new clinical system, symptoms or if the condition of the patient deteriorated, you should, in our opinion, change the treatment immediately, switching from immune therapy to targeted therapy. The same goes for other diseases as well. Thank you. And now another question. Uh, you were speaking about the length of immune therapy. What is the optimum length of immune therapy, uh, in your opinion? We do not have an exact answer. Uh, to evaluate the situation, you need up to three months. Uh, earlier phases uh, are not recommended. Why? I do not know. However, I know that all research on the subject uh, was uh, uh, was made over two years, and uh, it is clear that treatment with nivolumab is much better than the treatment with other means. Uh, if the patient has to buy the drugs on his own, then they usually are positive about buying new, uh, new drugs. Sometimes uh, the effect even grows after the treatment is stopped because the end strong point of the game uh, is much better than the situation. If we can find a marker like that, it of course will be a step ahead. But quite a lot of people are now working at that, so it might be that uh, it is right around the corner, the result. The length of the period of the uniform. Uh, when we first met that, of course, uh, we wanted to make, uh, like uh, progress, uh, but I don't remember when we had the first patient of this kind, and we didn't want uh, to uh, pull it off. 
quite a lot of people they think that clinic is of, is of significance of course Uh, usually, uh, after this rapid progression, the patients say, okay, uh, I feel that my tumor has grown and uh, my condition is poorer. Uh, I don't know what to do. I would recommend to wait for about six months. But it's, uh, again, these six months are not supported by any story. Uh, but we've heard uh, that three months uh, are not enough to start the process again. From time to time, I begin thinking that here the surgeon, here the coach in the middle, and I rely on the biopsy. Thank you very much for your presentation, though, because, uh, of course, uh, we are reading something, we are uh, using something, what we read about, but I have never even thought about melanoma. Uh, uh, could I take... Uh, monoclonal antibodies based on vitamins. Uh, but you are right, there might be a low, uh, a low number of uh, bubbles. Uh, and, uh, however, the topic is really very interesting because our uh, signature in genes is continuously changing. Uh, this or that gene uh, may be expressive or perhaps we could change the therapy or we could add something else. We could add, for instance, uh, regular therapy. If we depart from the PD-1 inhibitor, like Dicovan, uh, I, I would like to you to come to our place in Moscow so that they could read your presentation for them uh, after you come and bring it to us. Fortunately, it looks like Professor Arlov is going back, is coming back to our department, but I would like you to arrange for a visit with him. Another small question. We have too little time left for discussion. Uh, speaking about lymphomas, if we have a long uh, and positive effect, and we have to stop uh, the immune response using immune inhibitors, do we have to switch off uh, the water from the tap and the flower? If you come uh, again after you have a recurrent disease and you have been doing it wrong for a long time. But still, this doesn't tell us about the cure. If we speak about children, young people, I am sorry. But with senior citizens, tactics is different. It is enough sometimes that you are controlling the disease. And with children, if you have 
survival rate of five years or ten years or even fifteen and the same goes for younger people fifty uh, what do we do then how can we uh, how can we do without proper guidance without recommendations I have from we have from you might be in 10 years the number of deaths uh, from different causes of Hodgkin's lymphoma will be much greater than those of uh, those which uh, we had on top of the lo uh, latest uh, copy of our magazine with the portrait of Putin on the bag. If we speak about brand taximab, we should have started using it uh, before. Uh, instead of losing him up. So, there is a risk that a kid uh, will start losing his immunity and he will start suffering from hay fever, from bad weather, running noses. What is your opinion? Uh, you said that it is a dualistic approach. Uh, how would you react if we reconvene after, after the break? Quite a lot of people, they do it even with Ipimilvab. Uh, after a period of uh, treatment, uh, these repeat uh, approaches, repeat, repeat attempts, uh, they are often uh, going through the same procedure. For some of them it is really off. I wanted also to say another few words. We had a very severe a case of a very severe psoriasis. Practically the whole body was covered. But now we have a different opinion. Uh, we decided either to give you some sugar or well for instance uh, we had four cases of meningitis classical cases after we started them on glucocorticoids everything vanished even with meningitis, uh, 